live. I am on Wi-Fi. Well, hi, everybody. It's Karen Hutton. And uh, while I'm waiting for everybody to get in here, I'm going to say that I'm starting this live. Normally, I start at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Today, I'm starting a little bit earlier because, okay, we're on a field trip. We're having a field trip. I'm at Cedar House Sport Hotel in Truckee, California, and I'm here for a reason. But as it turns out, we're going to have a special guest. And she's available now. So we're starting now. <laughs> so that's what's going on here. Um, but today is going to be just me. Well, was just me. Now I'm going to have my special guest. But we have something really special we want to share with you in terms of, you know, thoughts and ideas and uh, and we're gonna have people walking through here and talking because we're kind of in a public space well on private property anyway you'll know what I mean in here in a minute so I want to preface all this and frame it by saying when I started this series this live Friday series for photographers and those of you who have followed the woo my podcast this has kind of turned into a little bit of a an interactive visual one of those and um, when I started it, it, I started with the idea of purpose. And by the way, if our audio gets weird or anything gets weird, please let me know because uh, we're on Wi-Fi, it's good and strong, but you know, we can move around the property and make it better if we need to. But I started this series um, with the idea of purpose. The reason for that is, and I, and I reiterate this, some of you who've been watching all of these lives have heard me say this, but some of you are new, so I want to reiterate it. And if you're curious what I'm talking about, it's, in, it's on my IGTV, I think I called it purpose, and about why it's important for artists and photographers on a, on a scale and on a level you may not have thought about before. It isn't that I'm saying anything so, so, so new that none of you have ever heard before. It's just that we're in a time where the application of it is maybe more important than ever. And I'll tell you why um, as we go through here today. So I'm in a place built on purpose. It's literally built with purpose. It was built on purpose and it is built on purpose. Take it any way you want. So basically, um, I've been teaching a lot. Uh, just got done with Photoshop World. Now we got a plane flying over. Normally I have my earbuds, but because I have a special guest who's sitting right here, um, we're on speaker. So it's gonna be a little, a little more uh, realistic, shall we say, than normal. So been teaching a lot. Photoshop World just ended yesterday. Next week is my last public presentation, my last class that I'm gonna be doing uh, other than my own stuff for the rest of the year. So it's my final one next, uh, what day is it? It's September 8th um, at, <laughs> you know what? The link is in my bio. It's Photocon um, September 8th. I believe it's free if you want to join us. It's called Authoring Landscapes. The link is there, you can go check it out. But I've been talking a lot about story. I've been talking a lot about purpose. Uh, the creative arc, you know, just all these, all these chapters in this whole story, because it all applies and it all has to go before you pick up your camera. Why? Because the quantum field is light. I've talked about this many, many times, but they've done, you know, in quantum physics, the tests are all, you know, for all these years, the quantum stream that they do these tests with are completely affected in outcome and in, in how they go and what they hit and how they hit it and everything by the observers thoughts feelings emotions expectations and guess what our medium is light and time so we work with quantum tools literally and that's why when everybody's uh, talking about signature it's so important to know what you love and to show up and be in awe and have this you know kind of expanded sense of self as you create because that gets embedded. It completely affects your outcome. It's a quantum field, quantum stream experience directly. So along those lines, um, as a for instance, I did a class for the Sedona uh, Photography Symposium and it was about finding your signature in photography. And someone wrote me afterwards, lovely, lovely email, which I appreciate so much. And she's a beginner and she said my big takeaway 
was find the awe, A-W-E, find the, oh, the awe. And the reason that is so important as a beginner, as a pro, as an anything, as a human, is because it's a transformational experience and it puts you in the zone where you can literally ride the quantum stream and frame all your technique and all your gear and everything around that and thus embed your voice, your message, who you are in every way into the pixels of your images, just like your voice, physical voice, I taught voice for 25 years, so I know this, is designed to broadcast who you are on every level, every time you open your mouth. But don't let that scare you. <laughs> it's all in how we're designed. So when we talk about art and we talk about creating and boots on the ground, making this less woo and more practical, that's why I wanted to sit in a place that was created just that way. And I want to talk to, we're going to bring the owner of this property in here in a second. You ready? Are you freaking out yet? I am. She's freaking, freaking out. She's totally freaking. She's not freaking out. I'm just checking. <laughs> and I'm going to introduce you to her because we're going to talk a little bit about, if it's okay with you, about how you envisioned this place and how you created it. Or do you want me to tell that whole story? Well, you could tell it, but I may she has, jump in. Okay. So what I'll do is introduce her and I'll start talking and then she'll interrupt me and finish the story better than I ever could because that's how we do. So I'm going to introduce Patty Baird to you. She is also, like I've talked to, you about, uh, t talked to you about my retreats that I've done for the last five years, the last two years before last year, uh, Patty was the one who helped me just expand it into a whole new level because she has... She's incredible. So we partnered on my retreats and we went to Italy and, you know, had this the most amazing experience. And we and we had them here, actually home based them here. And they were incredible. Patty's amazing. So I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to move this tripod and uh, introduce you to Patty Baird, um, co-owner of Cedar House Sport Hotel here in Truckee, California. We're going to move our little right. chairs close. We're going to like right. buddy up. Hi. Yeah, there she is. Got to always get in front. There we go. So this place is amazing. And I'm, we're going to show you some of the features and, and just things about it. But when you decided to build this, you had been traveling. We have yes. another airplane. Yes, that's okay. Super <laughs> awesome. I don't know if you can, you hear us over these airplanes? There is a little airport nearby. So this is going to happen. Um, if you cannot hear us or whatever, let us know. Anyway, so Patty, you traveled a lot because you are in, you led adventure tours. She's yes. amazing. You know, I got to move this back a little bit. She is amazing and super talented. You got to go. Yes. And, and she's on call. So yes. She may be. I will, I will be back. <laughs> she'll be back. So I'll tell more of the story and then, yes. and then she'll jump back okay. in. She's still yeah. running. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. She's still running, running the joint. So, um, so they have, they have guests coming that need to talk to her anyways. So the thing is this place, she had traveled, traveled in Europe. Um, she and her husband, Jeff, you know, like I say, led adventure tours and they're really geared toward a purpose driven life. That's, that's kind of, you know, how they are. That's why we get along. And they noticed over the years, you know, they stayed in all these, um, and they skied and they did all kinds of things over there and they stayed, you know, in the European chalets and the European, um, style of, of building not just hotels, but you know, places for people to stay of all kinds. And one of the things that really struck them, their takeaways were how they were created for connection, how they were created to fit within uh, the world that they existed in. They, they, they didn't just come in and like weren't built out of cement, you know, in a mountain setting. They really had a, uh, a sense of the environment and the materials and everything was really thoughtfully done, but in particular designed to connect people and to, and in so doing, they noticed how people relaxed more, how they like even on their adventure tours when they'd stayed in, stay in these places, how people like opened up, how they became more receptive to the awe around them and how this connection and this connection to, to each other, to themselves, to the sense of awe, which is literally a divine frequency, how it changed their lives and they would come home different. And I've noticed this too in, in the retreats that I've done. And, um, so when it came time, you know, they've been in 
commercial real estate. You know, they had a background in all of this, the two of them. So when they came to build this, she'll have to, I think it was 16 years ago, they built it green. It was the first green building in um, Truckee, meaning, you know, sustainable, like biodegradable, this and that and the other. It's a green building. Um, very, very limited, small footprint uh, in terms of energy and, and water and everything else. And, um, and it was built to fit into the territory here. So it, it, they wanted it to feel, have like a tree house feeling. So I'm gonna show you, we're sitting out in the patio, but you can see, so some of this feeling in the materials they used, in the way that they uh, designed the buildings with the rooms. Um, it has this particular mountain construction and you do and because of the way they planted the landscaping and planted the trees like I literally where I'm standing if I look up which I'm going to help you do it feels like I'm kind of in a tree house and it even feels more like that like say in those rooms up there on the second floor now doing that was not what everybody else was doing that's for sure especially not at the time what has happened since is that now their whole model of building and how they treat people and even the common space in there, the lobby is made, there's a, you know, like in the winter, especially when the fireplace is going, summertime it's too warm, but they have a fireplace going, they've got gathering places, they've got, you know, everything that encourages people to be there. People bring their laptops down there. There's a, there's a, a station, a bench along the beautiful window that looks outside, you know, to more of this but on that side of the property, so that if people want to work in that space and have to, they can, and they can shut everything off and, and connect. There are no TVs in the room that, you know, there's Wi-Fi, and if people need to connect, they can, you know, uh, technologically speaking. But it's really designed to step away from technology to, hold on, sorry, dropped my paper. Step away from technology, step away from the workaday uh, pressure not just in a, not, yes, in a kind of a luxurious way, but more in a, I want, I keep using the word connected and more of a kind of connected, sustainable, go deeper, um, connect with nature, be in nature. This, we're in Tahoe, we're in the Tahoe region. Look at these birds flying over me. And, and so people come here as a respite to regenerate, to, take a breath to see what their heart and soul and muse have to say and be able to then step out, go experience the wilderness and, and everything this area has to offer, which is tremendous. And, and she does it in a way that um, is, is, is sustainable. Now, Patty is also, this area became really popular. It like it was becoming really popular, but last year, you know, with the pandemic, everybody was escaping the Bay Area and coming to the mountains. And the tourist situation here went off the hook, and the locals were threatening to close Truckee, and they were having demonstrations in this little tiny mountain town um, against tourists because the tourists would come and they would, you know, just totally trash up the place. I mean, literally leave mountains of trash overrun everything, all go to the same places. And so because of Patty's global experience with hospitality, with sustainability and, and, and her connections with the people in Europe that have been doing this in a, in a, I don't know what I'm trying to say, a healthy for the planet, sustainable way for many, many years, she is heading up a movement here amongst hospitality, the town of Truckee, the whole area for sustainability. Um, visit Truckee Tahoe is the local site. You know, that's, I talked before, um, I've talked about how I supplied much of the art for that because my work is largely around those things as well. And so it was a, you know, that was a meeting of the mind, but she's working with them and they're, and they're creating a certification for this area to be sustainable, to be, um, a place that locals as well as tourists can, can be and get along. Um, 
Yeah, so this has happened in Scotland, it's happened in Newfoundland, in Italy, in, well, in Colorado here. I believe there's a, Aspen is a, I don't forget which, which place, I think it's in Aspen, that has a full certification, and there's one other, there's one other mountain place in the U.S. that is fully certified in this way. And it's a way to come back to nature and yet find a place for the people who live here, the people who want to visit, and to make it an expanded experience. So all of that was literally built into this place, which has led the way as a, as a boutique, it's a boutique hotel. It's a small, it's 36 rooms. Um, I, like I say, I've held all my retreats here. It's such an incredible home base because you want to be able to sink into your experience and, and to, to invite more creativity and more connectedness and more vision to, ha to happen. So it's, you know, the perfect place for that. Um, they do have a restaurant, you know, a lot of things have changed in the last year and that was some of what I wanted Patty to talk about. So she will be back here at some point, but, um, just taking a moment here, I wrote myself a couple of notes. So one of the things happening here right now, just as a sidebar, like it's the air is pretty good right at the moment. It really depends on which way the wind is going because the huge horrendous wildfires that are going on in the Tahoe region are literally, well, the evacuation, the northern end of the evacuation is about a half an hour from here. Um, but the fire is about 45 minutes from here, moving towards Nevada, moving towards the west. So thoughts and prayers, which matter because they are quantum as well. Why do thoughts and good vibes and energies matter? They matter in the same very precise way that photographing in a way that you're following what you love and capturing that and seeking the awe and not pressing the shutter until... <gasps> You get that feeling. It's the same thing, whether you call it prayers or good vibes or whatever. So everyone who feels moved to do so, you know, please imagine this, these fires being quelled and put out forever. Um, this is a, a really incredible area. Yes, we can have the discussion about why this all happened, but right now, good energy would be really wonderful. But I wanted to, do this live today in a space built on purpose. I'm gonna take a breath and say hi, all of you. That was a big mouthful to begin with. How, how is everybody today? How's everybody with this idea of purpose? Do you ever think about that with your photography and anything else you do? Have you experimented with it? With it? Does it resonate with you? I'm curious. Um, I tend to blab on and on about it. I. Uh, for the first time, people have asked me in, in the last several workshops that I've done, if I teach workshops on, you know, post-processing and how to, how to put all of that to work in the post-processing. And I don't do a lot of that, I'm, I may. So I'm no longer, um, my last public for some, you know, done for someone else workshop is on September 8th. And then we're going into a whole new phase for the fourth quarter where it's, I'm gonna be putting out some new material. Um, travelers, yeah, so in Scotland, they're having the same issue with travelers trashing the countryside and lighting fires, leaving their trash, right? Abandoning their shit. I was going to say that word, abandoning, abandoning their stuff. Yeah, it sucks. It really does. So it, it's a, it's a movement that's happening, at least amongst mountain communities to find a way to not just, you can't just stop something. You've got to create something better. And that's what they're doing here. Um, Good morning, Rick. How are you? Saying good morning, Cameron. Thank you for all the good comments. I know you'll tell me if my audio gets wonky. I was hoping you would join us. So in case anything goes wrong with the Wi-Fi, I'll know. So anyways, um, so Photoshop World, which I say just ended yesterday, I actually for the first time taught two classes on not specifically photography. One was on Procreate just really basic procreate for photographers and kind of how I use it and create a whole other form of art with it using my photographs. It was fun to do. And then I did a class on my particular process, start to finish on like three or four images. I always feel like I'm the human Cuisinart of 
post-processing. <laughs> so I, I always wonder like, how can I show what I do when it's all over the place? But I realize that everybody's got a different way of doing things and it's always fun to look over someone's shoulder. So I may be doing some of that. Um, if that interests you, DM me or email me or what have you, you can reach me directly through my website, which link in bio, all my, my world is from the link in my, in my bio. And like I say, next week, uh, PhotoCon in Hawaii, I was always going to do a virtual part. I'm teaming with Fujifilm for that. I'm a, those of you who don't know me, I'm a professional Fujifilm X photographer. So I do a lot of uh, presentations about my stuff, but on behalf of them, you know, talking about their gear and so on and so forth. Um, well, I don't talk about the gear so much as I talk about how I create with it and why I create with it. So, um, cool. So yeah, so we may be doing, I've got a road trip coming up. Finally, I've had to cancel two road trips this year. It's been like, oh my God, this has been really an interesting year because road trips are, you know, part of how I uh, create my work. So it's not just a vacation. It's always a work trip. But anyway, so we finally have one coming up in October and um, somewhere before, after, during whatever we're going to be, you know, once I'm done with all my commitments, this has been sort of like hell week, getting it all finally finished and out there. Um, then I'm going to be sitting down and, and uh, building out what we're going to do for the rest of the quarter, which we've got some exciting, really cool, exciting ideas, including teaching, including um, sharing technique and, and what I do aside from, you know, going on about purpose, <laughs> which is where it all has to start. And that it's also the thread that I continue all the way through um, post-processing. So, so it'll be an interesting journey. I have, a lot, I have a lot of ideas that I want to pursue that I can only do on my own. I can't do it when I, so much when I'm working with, with other partners because we're trying to meld our vision together. So, um, so what I want to do is one of the things Patty said, she wanted me to make sure that I said, and we are hopefully going to go into a room. We're going to see what she's dealing with in, in there, but, um, and I'm going to walk you through the lobby. I have to actually put a mask on to go do that. We don't have to wear masks outside, but we do inside. And, um, one of the things she wanted to make sure that I mentioned because when I talk about purpose, I talk about awe, I talk about before you even pick up your gear and decide what gear to take, which is, you know, it's a, it, that's a valid conversation too, but it's separate from this. It's connected, but it's separate from this. Um, is, is, so when I talk about, so I'm just trying to draw the, the connect our dots here. So when I talk about it, it's from the, the point of view for photographers and, you know, other creative people about how to get it right in your mind first, how to be grounded, how to be in the zone, what to look for, what to connect with inside of you, how to quiet your mind. And then from there, how to choose your gear, but only from there, because that's how you're going to be clear. And why, and your why, and your like, why do I like to do prints? Why do I like to create the kind of art that I do? I know my purpose, so I know my why. And it's very important. What she wanted to make sure I said is, it's been hell, you know, the last year running a place like this. Um, and you know, everybody has their own hellish experiences from last year. Uh, and so I'm not saying hers is any worse than anybody else's, but her particular one, she said, it's been very, um, she's, she's a very grounded anchored person, but she said last year was, was really unanchoring. She felt less anchored than she ever has in her whole life, less grounded. It was very difficult in coming back from last year. She decided to do, you know, like a lot of us, you know, like I had a big depression. I'm sure a lot of you did too. It was, it was a tough year and, and it, and it changed everything. Like it completely changed my business. I had to figure out what I actually had to figure out what it was I really wanted to do, what I really wanted to stand behind. If I couldn't travel and I couldn't lead my retreats, then what's next? What, what matters enough to start over <laughs> that took a while. 
I won't go into that whole thing. So here, you know, shut down, huge loss of income. Um, what do we do? How do we take care of people? She's got people depending on her. And it was all up to her, right? So she has her employees and many of them have been with her for 25 years through multiple businesses. They take care of her, they, they're, they're family, literally. So she wasn't about to let this, this place go under. So she was providing a service and a refuge for medical workers for a while. Um, you know, gone through many different phases. She's reimagined the business in, in different ways in order to stay viable and current and alive and be of service. But she said it's been really hard and really unanchoring. And the one thing in the remodel, it's not really a remodel, it's like a, a, an uplift because now coming out of last year, let's lift it all up, right? Let's, let's be a stand for light and life and expansion in spite of everything because that's what we have and you see that's what we have as artists is that vision and that ability to be uncensored in what it is we want to say in the slyest way we can be a stand for light and love and life and whatever your purpose is without actually using words that can be censored or canceled we make art so we're like a voice that cannot be quenched quelled, you know, quieted, all the key words. Um, it's an amazing thing. So we still have that. So that's another reason why it's important to meld through the quant in the, that quantum way as much juice as you can into your, your photograph so that you're saying something really important that can change the, the frequency. Now I talk about this and everybody looks at me like, and oh, she's talking about frequency again. Oh, that's so cute, right? So woo. Who is it that said, she's a really good photographer? A little woo, but a really good photographer. <laughs> so that's how, that was how somebody was describing me. And yeah, I am kind of woo, but I'm practical. I'm a practical woo. So what Patty said about that is that it was the art. So I'm doing, providing the art for all the rooms here, multiple pieces in each room. We did the dining room last year. Um, no, in 2019, we did that. And part of her vision with the art is become, become, she knew it would happen, but she said, the art is so grounding. It's really in an unanchored world when people come in here looking for some kind of respite. She felt it when the art started to go up. I photograph that way because you see, in the course of doing my work, I'm a stand for in my mind, my bigger purpose has to do with bringing more light into the world, anchoring people in a, in a sense of light and creativity. Hence, hence I call it, that's why I call my work oxygen for your walls, because I literally envision it that way. I was just talking about how art is so anchoring Good. doing that part. Patty's back. So, so the rest of it is, and she'll, I'm sure pipe in. Let's, let's get really uncomfortably close here. Um, <laughs> So the whole thing about this coming out of last year into um, this year with so many uncertainties and how you've redone it to make it welcoming again, to refresh the place, but the effect the art is having, that's what, and it isn't just that it's mine. I'm telling you what my purpose is and how it meshes with hers, but I'm saying this is what we have as photographers, as artists to offer the world if you get behind what it is you really want to say and stand for. But got to get in here. We got to see your face. Okay. I know. All right. I, okay. I mean it. I'm all right. Close. Here, yeah. We got the sun now. Oh, here, let's move over. Okay. Let's get into all the right. shade. We're going to, we're going to shift. Right. This is, this is real time. Okay. We don't, we don't make this stuff okay. up. All right. Anyway, I wasn't here when you were talking about the purpose of Cedar House. But. So, <laughs> so fill in. Well, they heard it. So she's okay. going to now fill in. Okay. Wherever. What it is, it's actually a reminder of connections. Um, and so the part of the inspiration was, was based on, I was noticing, um, you know, how we were all connecting more to each other, but it was all through technology. And, uh, I didn't say it that way. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say it quite that way. And um, technical connections, while, you know, very important and it's opened the world to us, they're not the same as physical connections. Nope. 
and there is some sort of protection that the screen gives you and 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 so forth and and i love the fact that i can communicate to my friends around the world and and so forth and i mean i love technology and, and so forth but it is not the same as physical connections and we as humans we do need that um we it's not just to each other but also to ground ourselves back mm -hmm. you know to nature exactly um, and and so forth and so you know i wanted to um remind people in sort of a subtle way of that importance i mean no one wants to be preached to mm -hmm. but there are ways that you can remind people and inspire them um through art <laughs> and through um, architecture which I feel is also art yep especially um, the way you've done it here <laughs> so I want to walk them I, I showed them a little uh -huh. bit but I want to like walk them around a little bit more too um, and and just you know to get people to unwind and and just to realize the importance you know that you know maybe too much screen time or too much time behind you know that we do need to um, reconnect back to what matters and this whole sort of COVID experience the the whole journey we've been in on the last 18 months I do think people are becoming more aware um, you know because we live sort of in isolation and mm -hmm. that's part of what sometimes technology does there is an isolating factor with technology right and so um, here you know again the purpose is to remind everyone that there are other things um, that are just as important that what we need to fulfill our lives and um, um, you know, plus also the way that we engage with our guests and so forth to, to actually um, to tell them that we see you and um, and in, in, a, in an odd certain way, in an odd sense, you know, the art is seeing the art, you know, so it's all about seeing things and noticing things and connecting back to them. And that is what we hope to be sort of the um, underlying theme or the message that people take away right. from you know with their experience yeah and it's nice know. the way you know when you step into a space you're not being preached to like yes. you said it's just around you yes you're it, it's okay so one of the things I when I teach about if you're gonna go out like I you know landscape and travel right that's that's my forte so if you're gonna go out there immerse and the reason that you immerse and not just sit there and think like you know you do all your planning and you know the shots you might want to get and where you want to be but at some point you gotta what i learned in acting school the term was throw your homework out the window not that you don't remember it but you make it so much a part of you you don't have to think about it you immerse in the experience and you let it begin this creative arc that you then express create take a look and see if you, you did it and make some adjustments go back in so it moves in this circular fashion of getting the inspiration, having it move through you, come out in an image, which you get to make adjustments, go back, do it again, rinse and repeat over and over again. Same in the post-processing. So, yeah, I think those are the, the main things. I just, I just love this place. Sometimes I just come here and hang out back here. If I just <laughs> kind of want to <sighs> step out of my life and into a space that's going to help me kind of find my own grounding again. So it was really interesting the way you said it this morning about the art anchoring. Yes. I love that. Do you want to do it? Can we, I want to show you the, the art of this architecture and then have us maybe, do we have a room we can go into? Yes. Let me just double check that in my pause there that um, it wasn't occupied. So okay. let me just double check real quick. So what I'm going to do while she's checking is, um, Grab my, actually I'm gonna grab my keys from the table where I set them, I'll be right back. Cause that would like really suck to have somebody take my keys. Then I'd have to live here. Oh. <laughs> Every time I come here, I never feel like I wanna leave. So, um, okay, right. so what we're gonna, so what I'm gonna do is flip this around so that now we're looking, so what we're looking at is this, and I'm gonna, well, you can see. 
here. I'm gonna actually close this up a little bit so we don't trip over the legs. Now, will I be getting the new, I don't know. I expect sooner or later I'll be getting the new GFX 50S too. Right now I'm working with the GFX 100S. So I have a, the project I have coming up in October is uh, with the 100S at the moment. So we'll see, Rick, thank you for asking that. Um, Fujifilm he's talking about. Right, so back to Cedar House. So like this right here, this to me epitomizes when you said the treehouse feeling, like that right there is like that. Yeah, in a certain sense, but what, what was really super important was that we have separate buildings. I mean, operationally, a hotel is it's more efficient as one building. But this was purposely done with multiple buildings because it forces you to go outside. Just scoot around with me so they can still hear you. So I'm gonna I'm just showing them the buildings. But yeah, these are these are just the the three guest buildings. You know, we actually consist of six buildings here. Um, there's three buildings that um, house 40 rooms total together. Each each building has about 12 to 14 rooms, and then we have our lobby, which um, also has a green roof which we're going to have to go at a little bit higher level to actually see that um, but there's a lot of um, environmental you can see um, a little bit when i zoom see how there's a uh, actual foliage <laughs> growing up there so when you say a green roof what does that mean um it's a living roof um and so there's a lot of um green <laughs> We were actually one of the early adopters of green building. Right. Um, and, and I was trying to explain to them what green building mm -hmm. meant, and I kind of sucked at that explanation. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it, it, it's to lessen your environmental footprint or your carbon footprint and so forth as much as you can um, through efficiencies um, and, um, you know, like energy usage. And one of the things that a green roof does is that it, um, actually i mean obviously it's the co2 exchange and so forth mm -hmm. uh, but it um has a cooling effect um and it um there's other reasons i'm just kind of blanking well, right that's, now that's but, pretty good <laughs> um but it's it's also aesthetically i mean it's just really you know pleasing and again it begins to capture that connection back to nature right um, exactly and, and so forth but we actually have several green roofs here um on the property there's a few on the other side they're not as um um, vegetated as this one. The other is use, uh, they, we tend to have like um, spring flowers on them and so then those die back a little bit. Right. So right now they're not at their peak. <laughs> so on the other side of the property, I'm a little, I wasn't really sure. I think we're going to stay on this side because I don't want to keep you guys like all day. I think we'll do another one on that side of the property because it's two different Wi-Fi's um, and sometimes cell signal up here is, is sketchy sometimes. Um, sometimes sometimes you just never know. know so anyway it's two different wi-fi's and i just don't know if in the course of um you know if it'll connect so i think we'll do them separately because we have more to show you here yeah. and, and i'm gonna oh yeah the other side is primarily our event um area where we have our meeting facilities and our restaurant so we're we're primarily on what we refer to as the hotel side of the of the property right so. okay so i'm just gonna we're gonna head to a room Right. to show you the vibe but i wanted to i wanted to step over here so you could see kind of the rest of it i, I think we'll will we be in a room where we can see yes. the roof um no um but we, we can we'll, we'll go we'll go through a few rooms okay we'll go through a few rooms so you can see i mean it's just such a beautiful place but aside from it being beautiful where is this place that's right um, some of you were new coming in here i'm sorry we are at the cedar house sport hotel you can look them up it it's Cedar House, wait, is it cedarhousesporthotel.com? Yes. So cedarhousesporthotel.com in Truckee, California. We're in the Sierra Nevada mountains, uh, not far from where the Tahoe fires are, which is why our air is not super great today. So one of the things that I think Karen would appreciate uh, <laughs> in architecture is that um, it's the use of slats because slats bring in light in different angles. you guys can hear me um can you guys hear can somebody confirm that producer steph is in the house 
Hi, producer Steph. <laughs> Sending you kisses. So can somebody tell me if you can still hear us? So do you offer relaxation classes along with meditation and yoga, things like that? Um, we do um, pre-COVID, <laughs> we were doing that. We'll see um, how long, but um, actually our general manager is a certified yoga teacher. So um, yes, we do. And a lot of um, our guests appreciate that. Oh good, they can hear now, because see, we're not even on Wi-Fi. We will reconnect with Wi-Fi, but as long as you can hear me, um, between Cameron and producer Steph, you guys just let me know if we wander off connection too much. Okay, okay I'm gonna flip it around again. We're gonna go upstairs and- uh, See a room. Yeah, see a room. Okay, okay, it's fine now. But now we're moving, so we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. So the slats let in light at angles. Ooh, sorry, I just hit my tripod on a step. Oh, wow, this is harder than it looks. <laughs> okay, so we're walking upstairs, walking upstairs. And, oh, it's neat. Look at the shape. I love the shapes because, you know, the trees are kind of like this. Hello, everyone who's coming in now. We are at the Cedar House Sport Hotel in Truckee, California. Oh, no. This isn't the room we want to oh, see. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> they got it ready for, so it's not looking as the way it oh, normally would. Okay, we're so. going to another room now. <laughs> I'm just sort of following along. Oh, let's go take a look at the, the, the roof. Okay, we're going to go look at the roof. So, so we're also talking about putting art on these walls, too. We're focusing on rooms, though, first. Nice to meet you. New people are coming in and saying hello. Now, that one, that room, we had a job. So now it's reconnecting to pause. Sorry, you guys, we're kind of, we're always going to come back in connection if it gets sketchy. Oh, here we go. So yeah. now we can see the roof. So I was trying to point this out to you. This is a green roof, right? So you can yeah. see it's kind of uh, getting toward seeing the mountains. Fall comes a little, autumn comes a little earlier than it does in the flatlands. But this is a, a roof. This is the roof we were looking at from down below. I just wanted you to see that. It's pretty cool. Part of being a green building. Okay. Let me see if we can. Which rooms? Hey, to be safe, we have to go downstairs. So we're going to go downstairs. I'm going to flip this around and talk to a couple of you that are. So on this live, um, I'm not having anybody come in. This is just going to be a, kind of a show and tell. <laughs> Working so that you and I both don't go down together. Okay, <laughs> walking down the stairs. Can she walk, talk, and chew gum? I don't know. It's, uh, okay, so now we're in. We're following Patty down the hall, and we're going to check out a room. So tell us then about these rooms, um, because I love, there's so many features about it that extend I'm gonna flip this around. Yeah, here's one of our cave rooms. <sighs> that Hopefully it won't be too dark. Can yeah. you flip that open? It is a yes. little bit dark. Yes. So this oh so this room has had the art done. So this is obviously a winter theme. So these are pieces that we've done one round of the art um, in this building, building one, and we're just getting ready to create the ones for the next building. But um, we are looking out the window. So this is where we were just standing, you know, out there. So talk to us about the rooms a little bit and the... and the. Well, one of the things that I wanted to do with, with the rooms was that the exterior of the um, hotel was designed purposely with a lot of um, patterns and texture changes. I love um, that. You all know I love patterns and textures. <laughs> I teach people to find those. Okay. Because it's a reminder, again, you know, we want you to go outside and so forth. And like nature, nature has different patterns, you know, different textures mm -hmm. and, and so forth. So that is how the outside was designed. And then the inside was designed totally for rest and relaxation. And things were done more out of, with a, minimum, a minimalist um, styling because sometimes what people don't realize is how clutter and too many things actually create stress. And so what we wanted to do was to do a very clean 
very peaceful, you know, type of design. So, yeah, that's a good point. So Cameron is, uh, he's like my, my second in command practically. <laughs> um, he's saying autumn and winter time landscapes are so awesome and have a calming effect. Yes. And they do. So like, for instance, this, these beds, which are European uh, style, I can attest to the fact that yeah. they're so cozy and it's so lovely. And, um, and this came from your European experiences. Yes. Yeah, spending nearly 30 years going back and forth. Right. Yeah. And then, um, and then like, so Patty chose, this is what I found so interesting because, you know, as an artist, you see your work a certain way. Um, and you, you know, I know I photograph them for a certain reason, but then to watch what she chose that would go along with, um, her vision, it was, it was a real, I don't know. It was a, it was a really interesting, it was very interesting to me. It really was. Uh, and so there you go. Um, so when I talk about this installation that we're doing, this is kind of what I'm talking about because what we're trying to do is create this calming. Yes. It's sort of, you know, um, Tahoe is an adventure um, mecca. Right. And so what we want to encourage people is to, you know, connect back to nature in the way that they love, whether it be just walking or even um, heart-thumping, you know, type of adventure. There's rock right. climbing and so forth. So we want you to play hard, but rest easy. Oh, love that. See, now I think that's a lesson for life. I really do. Um, and then let me show you. So this is one. Of, this was one of our king rooms. And then let me show you one of um, our queen rooms, which I really like because they have the outside decks. Too. I know. Whenever I come here, I always um, please the website. Yes, I said. The, uh, let's do the website again. So the website is www.cedarhousesporthotel.com. And that's C E D A R H O U S E. Cedar House sporthotel.com okay so so this is one of our um designer queen style rooms and okay i'm gonna stay still they lost us we lost you okay hang on i'm gonna write hang i don't know if this is gonna am i back Hang on, everybody, everybody, hang on. Hang on, everybody. Um, connection should be back. Okay, you can hear us again? I can't type fast enough. Okay, good. It seems like when we stop, uh, it works. Yeah. Okay, good. Because right now we're not on Wi-Fi for some reason, so we're just on... Um, <laughs> we're on 5G. Five, five e. <laughs> okay, we're back. Good. Thank you. We paused. So nobody lost anything. So tell us then, what were you saying about this? Oh, th this is one of our um, queen rooms. And uh -huh. it does really have a, quite a bit of a sort of maybe a Scandinavian European vibe to it. Um, but we do have the outside patios here um, that are connected to it. Again, the European, um, the German um, linens um, and so forth. But, you know, all the rooms have this sort of um, same vibe, you know, again, of calmness. And that's what we're, we're hoping to achieve. Right. And we also, if you notice, we put the live plants in the rooms, which is... A, a little bit of a different touch in hotel rooms, but again, it's that bringing back nature, nature, you know, that connection to something live. Right. Um, but the other thing too is snake plants. They're one of the best air purifiers. Really? That's <laughs> so interesting. Helps, yeah. Snake helps. plant air purifier. Yeah. Plus you have now because of the fires, yes. you yes. have actual yes. air purifiers. Yes. This is another one of the pieces we did here. Um, we made it a triptych and it's so, so basically you chose, we went through seasons and what pairings is, yes. and locations yes. that were alternate. Like, not everybody sees this view around. So it was a lot of different, which I found really interesting. It wasn't the traditional views of the Tahoe area. So what was your thinking about that? It's just, I mean, we all connect to different things. And so what I wanted to make sure of, there is a combination of, you know, 
you know, what we would call like a landscape. Um, and, and so forth. And this particular piece for myself, it just, I feel I'm just there. Yeah. Um, and I just want, um, you know, again, there's little things that help inspire people. And when I see that, I want to go there, Huh. you know, um, and so forth. But yet I can also see the outside right here. Right. <laughs> so it's like bringing the outside inside exactly. on both levels. Exactly. Okay, so we're getting asked, what is the round? You mean these round works? These are like, what do you, how do you describe those? They're, bowls? Yeah, they're just kind of like bowls that we would hang, yeah. But they're <laughs> made out of metal, yes. you know, kind of hand welded yes. or whatever. Exactly. It, soldered, I guess. Yes. You call it welded. <laughs> so yeah, so... So there's that, and that feeling of being out and wanting to go out, but still calming. I love it. I just love it. So basically, for how do we get out? Let's go back outside. Yeah, we'll go back outside since we're the Wi-Fi when we're moving gets a little spotty. Yeah, we're not even on Wi-Fi right now. <laughs> So thank you, Rick, for putting the, the website in there. I'm holding the tripod with two hands, and I never can seem to type when I'm doing these things. So basically, you know, oh, the other thing I started to say is every time I stay here, I get, you know, I'm not always so minimalist. <laughs> like, Patty can pack in, like, her purse and go for three weeks, right? I almost need Sherpas. I just, it's like, it's, ugh. It's really annoying. But um, I did introduce you to the away. Yeah, you did. Actually, she introduced me to the away bags, and that changed my life. And now I can be more minimalist. It's all about having the right tools. Um, yeah. So we're back out here. Gosh, I love it. And even in the winter time. Oh, let's. For the other thing I love, which I had never really understood completely, were the rain um, things. Well, what it is, it's the utilization um, of making sure that we don't waste water, although some of the drips there. Yeah, well, <laughs> can't help but that. But anyway, when we water the um, the, the roof, the, the, the garden roof, um, any excess comes down to be utilized for the lower gardens and, and so forth. And then there's actually another, if there's excess on the lower gardens, there's actually an underground that goes into a retention pond. So wow. it's just, you know. Oh, we'll be back now. Um, oh, I see. We're just switching back to Wi-Fi. Yeah. We should be good now. So say the last thing you were saying again. I forgot. <laughs> Did you re, oh, he was going to ask, he was going to ask that. Did you reuse water to water the plants? Yes. Yep. Yes, and that's what the, the rain changed. There's the something you part. did different in the walls, too. The walls. In the insulation? Was there? No. I mean, it, it's it's all like extra insulation. I yeah. Mean, obviously, we want um, not to waste energy, and so you have to be properly. Right. You know, from a bu building perspective. And, right. And so forth. Um, you know... Just a lot of our mechanical systems are highly energy efficient um, and, and so forth. Again, making sure that our carbon footprint is as small as that we can make it. But also the other thing that we um, try to emphasize is like no single use, um, which was a little tough with COVID, you know, before we had, you know, no, um, try to use, you know, no plastics, even our, um, um, keys, which I should probably give an example, are wood keys. We don't use plastic, um, you know, um, keys to. And they're the, the, the key essence. cards. Yeah, they're, the key cards. Yeah, yeah they're and wood. they're they're yeah they're wood. Yeah. It's like this really lightweight. Is it balsa wood? Yeah. Is yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, balsa wood yeah. keys. It's really cool. They switched. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. To to try to you know emphasize you know we have no bottled water here. Um, we try not to do um, any like the to go cups um, and so forth. But again, you know, with COVID, we had to bring some of that back. But right. we're slowly trying to revert back to pre-COVID days. So. So question is, it's an interesting way of getting the water down. Were they made specially for this project? Um, no, um, you can actually um, get the rain Switch. chains. Um, rain chain, I can't yes, think of the yes. name. Yes, it's, it's actually quite common and used in like Japanese gardens and, and so forth. So it, it's really a decorative downspout is what they are. They're so cool. I love, so in the winter when the snow melts and then freezes, they, they become like a sculptural 
Yes, um, like an ice sculpture. Yeah, it's amazing. So you guys, I just kind of wanted to introduce you to Cedar House because I'm going to be, um, as this as the installation goes in, talking about it more and um, sharing more with you. But I wanted you to meet Patty because she's like one of my besties in the world. And, it, <laughs> and that happened. It's true. Mm -hmm. And it happened because of our shared vision for art and connection mm -hmm. and being a light in the world, which we can all do. Um, and it's more important now. I like that. Rick says the prices per night are reasonable, cheaper than my planned trip to Vermont. I'm just saying. <laughs> There's so many things about this place that I just love. And I, I stay here too. Some, you know, when I need a respite. And of course, like I said, when we do our local retreats, um, we do them all here because there's just really nowhere else that we can kind of like get to that other level because it requires staying in a place that takes you there without a lot of effort. Um, yeah, check them out, Cameron. Those, yeah, those downspouts are very cool. Is Patty a photographer too? Well, she wasn't. But now, no. <laughs> she's not. No, no. Um, I, I take a pretty mean iPhone. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, she really does. Now, Pat, so your background, the reason uh, we connected over the retreats is your background in event planning. Mm -hmm. And she's a whiz at numbers. Two things I suck at. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, even though I held retreats on my own, I did them in France because you don't have to think too hard because it's all right there. But here... It, it's a lot, you gotta plan, you know, drivers and stage this and get permits. And I mean, I couldn't figure out how to crack the code here. And I met Patty and she's like, oh, I got, I got permits for that and we can do this. And I'm like, I love you. Anyway, as it turned out, we, we mesh on, on so many other ways. She's yes. like my long lost sister. Yes. So mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so pretty much wherever she goes, I'm gonna have to go too. I'm just reminding you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just, you know, so you know. Anyway, I don't want to keep you guys forever. This went on a little long. Um, does anyone have any other questions or thoughts or let's go where the light's better. So, because, you know, I'm getting older and any a light on my face is going to be really helpful. And it's all about me. I'm <laughs> kidding. It's not really yet. Kind of. Uh, any other questions before we let you guys go and enjoy your day and think about creating with purpose and why it matters because it does it it changes people it 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 alters the frequency you said when the arts first started going in just how different the rooms felt right didn't you say oh that? oh yes yeah did um, you uh, <laughs> Elba. Uh, i didn't realize you were talking to me <laughs> i was i know i can't turn because i'm all kind of locked in on holding this um, thing you know the thing that um i'm i always like um know that um we did it right is when um people when a guest comes up t to me and they say you know there's just something here i just can't pinpoint it but i just feel so much better um i know what it, it is, was the but... oxygen on the walls <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's everything it's, yes. it's just everything and patty was the one who i'll tell you you know how i talk about awe all the time and i always did but one day early on we sat down and had like a three hour conversation yeah. about awe and she was the one who pointed out all the research, all the actual, uh, psych the science of psychology. What, right. do, you, what do you call that? Yeah. It, well, Psychoscience. It is. It, it's almost, um, they almost consider awe could be our sixth sense and, and so forth. And you know, the wellness, um, you know, how it does contribute to, you know, our wellness. And it's just something, again, it's that connection. We are part of this earth and we need to be able to connect to it. So. And the art is one of the outpourings yes. that directly connects people. So we have a superpower, you guys. The reason for this series is to point that out and to point, point out some of the ways beyond technique, beyond gear, beyond sliders, um, what's involved in, in making that happen because we have a superpower that the world needs now more than ever. Yes. I just cannot, anybody who is here today listening to this, you're here for a reason. And I'm just saying, uh, get out there and do it. And other people are saying art definitely changes the room in so many ways. That's true. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy my art. Clarification, have I planned any retreats here in the future? Well, <laughs> we did have. <laughs> it, it all depends on where COVID goes. So. Yeah, we're kind of yeah. waiting to see, but you know, the minute we can, yeah, we will. Um, 
I keep saying, should we just throw something together in a month? <laughs> I know. Uh, but it just keeps yeah. changing, and so we're going to wait. We're going to yeah. wait and see. But, yes, it's just waiting. Um, what else can I tell you? Any other questions? Any other comments? I love you guys. I hope that this helped in some way, inspired you in some way. Keep your eyes open for I've got upcoming events and cool stuff going on. So uh, I'll maybe be... soon here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're yeah here with yeah. the art installation. Oh my goodness, this is like beyond my wildest dreams. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, so on that very uh, super fantastic note, I'm going to shift hands so I can shut this off. I'm going to say goodbye. Bye bye. I'm so happy you got to meet yes. Patty. She's like Great. one of my best people in the world, and so are you. So get out there and make it a great weekend. Love you guys. Bye.